Today we shall be installing WSL2 for Windows which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. This allows you to try out Linux, play with Linux without needing to dual boot. It also allows you to, to develop on Linux using Windows. The major difference between WSL2 and WSL1 is that WSL1 was just a translation layer between Linux and Windows, whereas WSL2 actually uses a lightweight VM in the backend, which makes it a lot faster. It's technically an auto-sizing VM. The upside of using WSL2 over WSL1 is that WSL2 offers you about three to six times better file performance, and you get system call compatibility. To get started first let us make sure we are running the latest version of Windows. To do that we shall type the Windows key and R which will give us this run dialog box and just type winver and as you can see over here I am running version 2004 which is build number 19041. This is the required version and you cannot go anything lower than this. For systems that are below this, you can update, you just go to updates, check for updates and as you can see here, I am already up to date so I do not need to do it. To enable it, uh, there are two ways, one is I could use it via the GUI. So, we just search for features and it says your turn windows features on or off. And over here if you look scroll down, you see windows subsystem for Linux and you will have to enable virtual machine platform. But I shall enable it via the command line. So, to do that I will open PowerShell as administrator and run as administrator the standard UAC warning. I shall paste these commands in the notes below. So, first I am going to run this and I have said no restart. So, copy and I shall paste it here. This will install Windows subsystem for Linux and now I shall install virtual machine platform. Once this is done, you would require to restart. So, once the system restarts, I shall be back. Okay, now that we are back, uh, I shall download a distro from the Windows Store. And over here, we can just type Ubuntu. I shall download the 18.04 LTS. As in my case, I have already have downloaded it. So, I can directly launch it. It may ask you to sign in, but you do not require to sign in while installing it. Now, it will install it and it will ask you to enter a username and a password there. So, now I shall just enter a username and a password. And there I have WSL up and running, but this is technically WSL1 as I shall show you from here. If we do WSL minus L space minus V, you can see it is running version 1. To convert this, there is a command. 
but what will happen is I would need to install an uh, updated kernel. You only have to do this once. You can download it from the Microsoft site. And once that is done, you be able to use WSL2. So to show you the, com the error it gives you, I will just say WSL space set version. And since I'm running Ubuntu, and I shall say version 2. Sorry, my mistake. Set hyphen version. And there, it tells you do you need to update the kernel by visiting this link. I already have the link over here. And let me open edge and click on this link here. I shall say save take a couple of seconds okay now that we have the file I'll just run it it's the standard next 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 UAC click yes and finish so now we can convert this to version 2 we're running the same command again and you can see here uh, in the background that it's terminated WSL to WSL for the time being and there now it is converted if you type the same WSL minus L minus V you should see now that it's version 2 if I come back here and relaunch it we are technically running version 2 what this also allows you in the future is you can install docker and actually make it run on WSL2 instead of having it run on a virtual machine in the background. We can actually just check if we do htop. It's running only at 71 MB. And that is it. That is how you install. Also, one thing I'd like to show you is that suppose you do want to, ex to access windows from here like say you want to access the file explorer and then you just say dot for here what do you get is your windows file explorer and you get you can see all your linux config files over here as nothing is over here or if i add a file that says if you refresh the page you can see created the file and this acts like a network drive so you'll see it your network WSL Ubuntu home my username and the files so this allows you to seamlessly access files between your Linux distribution and your Windows distribution okay that is all for today and we shall get back to you later